Hi, so over the last several months I've been working on a library called HSCPP or HotSwap C++. HSCPP is a library that allows C++ code to be changed at runtime. It's especially useful for, say, game development where it's common to make small changes. HSCPP is inspired by Runtime Compiled C++, a project by Matthew Jack and Doug Binks. I integrated Runtime Compiled C++ into one of my projects a few years ago and posted a demo on YouTube, but unfortunately I never really followed up on it. I ultimately decided to create a new library using the ideas from Runtime Compiled C++. In creating this project, I had the following goals. First, I wanted strong cross-platform support, supporting Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, as well as MSVC, Clang, and the G++ compilers. Second, I wanted it to be easy to integrate HSCPP into a project, but also make it easy to disable HSCPP in the final build. Third, I wanted HSCPP to have the potential to be extensible. That is, the user could provide a custom compiler or a custom file watcher for unsupported platforms. Finally, I wanted to add more advanced features regarding memory management and dependency management, which I'll show off in some of the demos later. HSCPP works by monitoring the source files of your running program. When one of those source files changes, HSCPP will recompile a new shared library containing that code, and it'll link it into the currently running program. Object instances containing the old code will be deleted and replaced with new object instances containing the new code. In addition, any object instances created in the future will be using the new code. This approach does come with some limitations. First, the hot swappable code must be within a class. This is because the hot swapped methods must be virtual. Ordinary functions have their address baked into the binary, but virtual methods by their nature are actually resolved at runtime. Another issue is that ordinary globals and statics cannot be used. This is because HSCPP works by compiling a bunch of different shared libraries, each with which has its own statics. Finally, all memory allocation must be done through HSCPP because only HSCPP is aware of where all the code lives among all those different shared libraries. Now we'll go through a few examples to show how to use HSCPP. To get started, we first create a hot swapper, which serves as the main interface into the HSCPP library. Next, we tell the hot swapper where our source and include directories are located so that source files can be monitored for changes. As mentioned earlier, normal globals and statics do not work with HSCPP. As a workaround, HSCPP allows you to specify custom data that you would like to be global, which will be visible even in newly compiled shared libraries. We allocate a couple of printer classes, which are the hot swappable classes we will be demonstrating. These are allocated through HSCPP so that HSCPP can keep track of their most recent constructor. Finally, we tell the hot swapper to update in an update loop. This handles all HSCPP internals, such as watching files, running the compiler, and swapping new modules. Let's look at the printer declaration. To create a hot swappable object, we add the HSCPP track macro into the class declaration. The first argument should be the class name, and the second argument should be a unique key which will identify the class internally. Any string can be used, but it is easiest to pick the full name of the class, with namespaces included. Going to the implementation, in a moment, we're going to change the update method at runtime, but first let's look at the class constructor. In the constructor, we can use the HSCPP set swap handler macro to provide a callback function, which will be triggered when a runtime swap is taking place. The old object instance will have its callback triggered just before it is deleted, giving it an opportunity to serialize out its state. After the new object instance is created, it too will have the callback triggered and it can read that serialized state from the old instance. This allows swaps to appear seamless. Note that we update the object instance in the global printers array. This is because in main we call update on the printers within this array. After a swap, the array contains pointers to the old object instances, which have been deleted. Now we're ready to actually go and make a change. So let's first start the program. And it's just printing out the index. I'm going to go ahead and make a change. Save the code. Wait a little bit for it to compile. And the hot swap was successful. The memory allocation demo shows how HSCPP can use a custom memory allocator. This demo uses a sample memory manager, which was written specifically for the examples. Notice that we pass a custom memory allocator a reference for the allocation resolver, since, as stated earlier, all memory must be allocated through HSCPP. Taking a quick look at the memory manager header, we see that our custom allocator must inherit from the HSCPP allocator interface. In the custom allocator, we must override three methods, 
HSCPP Allocate, HSCPP Allocate Swap, and HSCPP Free Swap. The first method is triggered under a normal allocation called through the allocation resolver. The latter two are called by HSCPP whenever a runtime swap is taking place, first with HSCPP Free Swap to delete the old instance, and then with HSCPP Allocate Swap to create the new instance. Notice that HSCPP free swap returns an integral ID. This ID will be the previous ID parameter in HSCPP allocate swap. This allows a swapped object to reuse the same ID, the usage of which will be more obvious in a minute. Rather than return a raw pointer to the object, the sample memory manager returns a smart object I've called a ref. Looking at its implementation, we see that refs overload the dereference operator, but actually refer to memory by integral ID. Now it makes sense when we consider why it's useful to reuse the same ID when the object instance is swapped. Although underlying memory may have changed, no refs to the object will break. Now we can make a runtime change. Let's just fast forward through it since this is very similar to the simple demo. Finally, the thing to take note here is that we're calling update on the ref directly. Even though the object was swapped, we did not need to update any sort of global data to avoid dangling pointers. The runtime require demo shows one way to handle dependency management. When a file is recompiled, it may depend upon other files, libraries, or require additional preprocessor definitions. HSCPP uses a preprocessing step where it parses the file and looks for special HSCPP macros. The content of these macros are evaluated and determine additional compiler dependencies. To use the preprocessor, it must first be enabled with a hotswapper's enable feature method. We can also pass variables to the hotswapper. These, as we'll see in a moment, can be referenced within HSCPP preprocessor macros. One minor difference here over previous demos is that we call the printer's update function within a protected callback method. If an exception occurs in a protected method, HSCPP will catch it and give you an opportunity to fix your code. On Windows, even null pointer dereferences can be caught and fixed at runtime. Let's look at what these preprocessor macros look like. Here we see various macros that start with HSCPP require. These specify additional compiler dependencies that this file needs in order to build and run properly. For example, HSCPP requires source will add additional source files to the compilation list. Note that the HSCPP preprocessor has no relation with the C preprocessor. As such, if defing out macros will not remove them. For conditional selection of require macros, we can use HSCPP if macros, which support simple expressions using the variable set in the hot swapper. For example, here we check the OS variable to determine which library to link in. We can also interpolate variables within strings using the dollar bracket syntax. HSCPP require macros can be placed anywhere in the file. Here we require the base state.cpp file. If we go to that file, we see that it has HSCPP requires of its own. These will also be pulled in when compiling printer.cpp, as HSCPP require source will cause the preprocessor to parse files recursively. Now let's make the changes in printer.cpp. So first we run our program. And I'm just gonna add a single space and save just to force a runtime compilation. You can see that it included all those additional files from the HSCPP require macros. And there you go, you can see that the other preprocessor definitions are defined. Because the printer's update function is within a protected callback, we can throw an exception without the game crashing. Upon detecting the exception, HSCPP waits for us to make a change. When we make the change, HSCPP recompiles and reattempts to run the modified code. Since we removed the cause of the exception, the code now runs normally. The MGUI demo shows how we can update a user interface at runtime. In main, we tell the hot swapper to link in MGUI by specifying a path to the MGUI library. Let's now look at the widget declaration, which represents a basic MGUI window. The most notable thing here is that we keep a vector of refs to widgets. This shows how, with refs, even complex data structures such as trees can handle runtime swaps correctly. The implementation of our update method constructs a basic MGUI window. In this demo, pressing the Create New Widget button will create a new MGUI window, whose parent is the current window. Up in the constructor, we again use HSCPP set swap handler. In this case, the save function will do the same thing as calling serialize in the instance being deleted and unserialize in the new instance. In the destructor, we use the HSCPP is swapping macro to detect if an object is being freed as part of a runtime swap. This prevents a double free of the child widgets since HSCPP will delete these widgets on its own during the swap. 
Back at the update method, let's take a quick detour into the globals class. To avoid placing HSCPP global user data calls throughout the code base, we can isolate them to a single globals class. Here we are using it to have a single globally available MGUI context, which is set at the start of the hot swapped classes update. As a quick example, let's just fast forward through changing some of the text. So first we create three different widgets, modify the text, save the file, and we can see the result of the runtime swap. Finally, the dependent compilation demo shows how HSCPP can automatically deduce file dependencies and compile dependent files. To use dependent compilation, it must be enabled with a dependent compilation feature flag. Looking at printer1.cpp, we see that it depends on mathutil.h. The HSCPP preprocessor is capable of parsing include files and will build a dependency graph for the includes in your program. Going to mathutil.h, we see the usage of the HSCPP module macro. In this case, we have declared mathutil.h to be part of a module called math. mathutil.cpp adds itself as part of this module, as does mathutilextra.cpp. So what does it mean to be an HSCPP module? If a file within an HSCPP module needs to be compiled, it knows that all other source files within that module will also need to be compiled. Furthermore, it needs to compile any other files that depend upon this module. This means that compiling mathutil.cpp will also trigger a compilation of mathutilextra.cpp and printer1.cpp. This works the other way around too. If printer1.cpp is compiled, mathutil.cpp and mathutilextra.cpp will also be compiled. This allows even code outside of hot swappable classes to be modified at runtime. When the code is changed, all dependent hot swappable classes will be recompiled and they will all use new versions of their HSCPP module dependencies. So, fast forwarding through the demo. First, when we make a change to printer1.cpp, we see that it compiles all the math module dependencies. Then, when we change mathutil.cpp, again, all the math module dependencies are recompiled, and printer1.cpp is going to use the latest version of the math code. And that'll wrap up the demos. Looking forward, the current focus is on stability and testing. I'm going to be using HSCPP in more real-world projects as part of this effort. I would also like to add better tooling. In particular, I would like to create a proper memory manager. Though the demos use their own memory manager and refs, these are not production ready and are fairly inefficient. I would like to create a good general purpose solution which will eventually ship with the library. Another improvement would, would be to increase the compilation speed on Clang and G++ as this compilation is not currently multi-threaded, unlike on MSVC. Finally, and of lowest priority, I may eventually experiment with remote reloading where a cross-compiled library can be sent to the hot swapper running on a separate machine in theory, this would allow hot reloading to work on an embedded device. Thanks for watching, and you can download HSCPP with a link in the description.